Well, in this video, definitely got to talk some early Calgary Flames off-season news, mostly concerning with Jeff Ward. Talk about some playoff injuries, as we definitely always find out after the playoffs once a team either wins the championship or gets knocked out on who played hurt, as well as just some early speculation on what could happen with some players. So the first thing I'll talk about in this video is that Sportsnet revealed a, an article talking about that the Calgary Flames are likely going to make their decision in the next week or two on what they're going to do with Jeff Ward. As you got to remember, Jeff Ward is still technically the interim head coach of the Calgary Flames. And when you look at the Calgary Flames coaching history, it's actually not very often that the Calgary Flames have had an interim head coach, but this is definitely was the longest tenured coach that we've had on an interim basis. As you can probably debate on, is Jeff Ward the right decision to make to be the head coach going forward? Because it's still tempting right now to maybe consider bringing in a bigger name, experienced coach that has finals experience, but so does Jeff Ward. Not as the head coach, because you can remember, he was with the Boston Bruins when they won the Stanley Cup in 2011 under Claude Gillian. But you could probably say Jeff Ward, and there was another article that uh, SportsCenter re released a couple weeks before, the one talking about the decision made in the next week or two on about the interim tag. You could probably say he saved the season. As you know that he suddenly became the interim head coach after you know what happened with Bill Peters, that was definitely the low point of the Calgary Flames season in the 2019-20 season where before all the stuff that came out with the racial allegations and even physical abuse allegations when he was the head coach of the Carolina Hurricanes that the Calgary Flames were definitely, you know, just under a game 500 they couldn't score a goal, and after having what I always keep saying, the best season in a generation last season, but fell short in the playoffs against the Colorado Avalanche, the Calgary Flames season looked like it was going off the rails and that the in-out pattern was going to continue. However, when Jeff Ward took over, suddenly it seemed like the team got rejuvenated, was playing more loose, and the fact that the team was winning. And you could say before all what has happened, with the you know COVID-19 and the pause. And I think this team was on their way to getting into the playoffs and didn't need to do a playing series. And you could probably say it was a small victory that the Calgary Flames slightly got over the, you could say, the playoff hump a little when they beat the Winnipeg Jets in the best of five playing series qualifier, three games to one. However, we definitely got humbled against the Dallas Stars even though the Calgary Flames were 12 seconds away in Game 4, um, potentially taking three games to one lead. And you can question the decision that Jeff Ford made in Game 6, where Calgary ultimately had that collapse. You could probably say it was aided on the, the goaltending change, where he called the timeout, and then he placed Cantel with Dave Riddick, and Dallas continued on. So, however, how Dallas did that... Uh, Shooting star onslaught to the Colorado Avalanche in the second round. So uh, there's at least that working for him now, you could say. But you could probably say Jeff Ward definitely has done very well to cement his case on getting that interim title removed. Or now we'll say Calgary Flames head coach instead of saying Calgary Flames interim head coach. But I guess we'll wait in a couple weeks on what direction the Calgary Flames will go and I would probably say, as a fan, I'd say he's done enough. I think his record was 25-14-5 once he took over for Bill Peters. Or you remember Bill Peters, I looked at his record, I think it was 11-12-4 that the Calgary Flames were at the time when all the stuff came out with the racial allegations and the physical abuse allegations. And the Calgary Flames were, you know, towards the bottom of the standings and special teams and scoring. Well, all that improved and got into the you know top half of the league in terms of special teams and defensive play under Jeff Ward. And the fact that, you know, if you look at his resume, 
and we did definitely spend some time with the new Boston Bruins first, including in that cup ring in 2011. And that's where he also had that relationship with uh, Milan Lucic, and he also was the assistant coach with the New Jersey Devils before he came to Calgary when Bill Peters was originally hired. And the other thing that also stands out with me with Jeff Ward was he was actually on the short list when the Calgary Flames were considering Glenn, before they went to Glenn Holtz and Fred Coach, which I think is another reason why I think the Calgary Flames probably will, in my opinion, although you never know. I mean, it would surprise me, actually, if they did decide to bring in, as tempting it is, with the Gerard Glenn, Pierre Lavaliolette, who are still available, and maybe you can also throw in uh, Boost Brujo, as he was let go from the Minnesota Wild, because now you got to remember that Washington Capitals are looking for a head coach after they let Todd Reardon go, and they're also speculating that the Washington Capitals are looking to go into that experienced market, where if you look at the tender of Alexander Ovechkin with the Washington Capitals, other than Barry Trotz, who ultimately led him to the Stanley Cup, under Alexander Ovechkin, every other coach that the Washington Capitals had was a new coach that never coached in the NHL, and you could say Jeff Ward is still a new head coach, but he has been experienced in the NHL with assistant, and he's actually coached many times in Germany as well, and he also used to be, you know, a teacher as well, actually a grade school teacher, so uh, teaching in his blood, so I would think he might bring in stability if they did that, because he has respect to the players, and I think the team responded well, and before all this happened with COVID, that uh, I think the team would have made the playoffs under traditional form and then reigned to be seen. That's one of those what ifs on what could have happened. Let's say we, let's say, played Edmonton in the first round instead of having the, the playing series of the Winnipeg Jets, but I think we were prepared well under Jeff Ward's guidance and the fact that, uh, you know, I'd say Dylan Dubé, you know, Sam Bennett, and Milan Lucic definitely stepped up and as a third line under his tutelage. And Milan Lucic even also said that he got rejuvenated in Calgary after he was on there pondering about possibly maybe not playing at all. And he eventually got rejuvenated. So uh, I'm going to say that uh, Jeff Ford probably would be done enough, even though there was a few possible blunders, but you kind of expect that throughout the season that he probably will eventually be efficient in the head coach, but that's up to the Calgary Flames. I don't make that decision, but uh, I would say if he, he hopefully at, at worst case scenario, yeah, he will still be with Calgary as an associate coach. Because when you've had definitely the under Brad Schlitten's tender, when he first came in, well, he inherited Bob Hartley, and after when he led the Calgary Flames to the playoffs, we probably might have, Overachieved, but he won the Jack Adams Award for Coach of the Year. That it was probably, you know, almost the right thing to sign him to the extension. And then after the next season, we regressed. And then that's when he uh, decided to let him go. So then he brought in Glenn Goltz, in which, um, looking back, I'm not surprised that that kind of coach came in. However, he only lasted two years with the in out pattern. And the fact that uh, the Calgary Flames were considering also Jeff Ward at the time, and the other coach that I actually would have wanted at the time before Glenn Goldson actually was Kevin Deneen. I know there was Randy Carlo that was also considered at that time before you know Glenn Goldson, but he only lasted two years, and then and then he brought in Bill Peters, which Brad Levin had some familiar with him when in the World Hockey Championships, and then he only lasted just over a year. I mean, the first season, obviously, was a success, and then the threat. second season didn't start off as well, and then all the stuff that happened that prompted this decision. But, uh, you know, it would bring us stability and at least slow down the carousel. Well, that's up to the Calgary Flames. I would say if, I would say probably my first opinion is that they're probably going to just say he's the head coach. But if he's not, then it better mean because you're bringing in a much more bigger name like a Pierre Laviolette or a Gerard Gallant. But given the Flames' history, they don't really do that, and I would say the only other times that in the coaching history that Calgary's had interim head coaches, well, if you look back to the 1991-92 season where Calgary disappointed, that was the first season that the Calgary Flames 
missed the playoffs when the franchise moved from Atlanta. That was when Doug Risebrow stepped down and he Sherrod took over the rest of the season, but we only knew coming in that he was only going to be the interim until the end of the season, and then they brought in Dave King. And then the other time you could probably say that, uh, although I think unofficially we had an interim, was when we brought Don Hay in to be the head coach for the 1999-2000 season. Don Hay didn't actually last whole season, and Greg Gilbert at the time was on the coaching staff, but I think he was quickly brought in, and then they named him, and he was officially the head coach, and then he was here for parts of three seasons. And then after the Greg Gilbert tender, he was let go before we brought in Daryl Sutter. Al McNeil actually was an intern coach, and we knew he was the only a Band-Aid because he hadn't coached in 20 years, and I'd say he'd done well. So I'm going to say this is only the third or fourth time in the 40-year history of the Calgary Flames that uh, we actually have had an interim head coach, but this was definitely the longest tenure, you know, pushing aside the the pause and giving everything. But I think there's definitely been enough body of work that you can make a decision there on what to do with Jeff Ward. So that's my take on Jeff Ward. Now for other uh, playoff news here. Well, you could definitely say the Stanley Cup is one of the hardest trophies to win in sports. I also always say is the most impressive championship trophy in sports. Well, it wasn't surprising that it came out that when Matthew Gachuk was revealed that he had a concussion, that definitely changed the complexion of said series that we talked about with the Dallas Stars, that when he came out, that definitely changed the collection and took out probably, you could say, the best player that the Calgary Flames had and the fact that the physical play dropped a little when he knocked out. I mean, it was no surprise when he got collision between the Jamies and Jamie Ben and Jamie Alexia that he had a concussion. However, a couple other injuries were definitely a lot shocking, and you could say both of these players, I would say, had pretty good playoffs for the Calgary Flames. Well, Rastus Anderson, the fencing, he had a broken foot. So, wow, and you could say he's probably our top, you know, young defenseman right now. And then Sam Bennett, another player that definitely played really well, had a torn triceps muscle. And that was one of the reasons why he ultimately didn't take as many face-offs. So, uh, yeah, definitely all started off with, uh, I think he was injured at the time, because I remember going into the 2014 draft that uh, yeah, everyone was making fun of Sam Bennett that he couldn't do a pull-up. But uh, I think he had a shoulder injury. And But seeing how Sam Bennett plays, I mean, he definitely doesn't have that offensive ability that he showed when he played for Kingston. But he still is that, you know, checking forward that we can... Compare him to Doug Gilmore, where you could say he was one of the best check and forwards that the Flames ever had, and was one of the role players that you could say one of the unofficial leaders that the Flames had in 1989 that won the Stanley Cup. Sam Bennett definitely is that player, and I'd still say there's still more out of him to give. It's just a matter of what he does in the playoffs, can he do that in the regular season? But he's definitely still worth keeping around. But yeah, those are definitely uh, stunning injuries that uh, one was not surprising. But broken foot and trauma torn triceps muscle? Wow. I mean, yeah, that's what you always hear with stories with players that uh, after, you know, they either get knocked out of the playoffs or they win the Stanley Cup, that you almost got to have a couple of ambulances waiting for them outside the arena that after they're done celebrating, it's like, all right, <laughs> I got to go take care of myself now. But uh, it tells you what players go through to try to win the Stanley Cup. And why you could say is the most difficult trophy to win you because you're playing for two months every other night. And now it's a more compressed schedule, at least during the bubble, with travel, long overtimes, and playing through insane injuries. And then the last part you could say kind of ties in with Jeff Ward is if we decide to officially name him the head coach, you'd definitely be interested to know what kind of team he'll have in front of him, especially on defense, because we still know that... Uh, Calgary has, you know, five unrestricted free agents. When it comes to on the defense, I mean, especially Travis Hammock and TJ Brody, I mean, Derek Gustafson and Derek Forbert were also thrown in. When well, we acquired them at the deadline and then Michael Stone, but uh, you almost got to wonder how many of those players will return, especially when we don't really have that big defenseman right now that can come in and play NHL minutes. I mean, there might be some of them probably might come back just to be signed as an extra Forward, and then you almost know, got to wonder are we going to decide to keep back Tobias Reeder or Zach Ronaldo? I mean, 
considering how much of a role they played in the playoffs, they probably will. And then, of course, you got Mark Jankowski, which I personally think they're probably going to move on from him. And then, of course, you know there's still that big decision on, they, although they don't need to do it, is about with Johnny Goudreau and Sean Monaghan. I mean, it's, I could see both sides of the coin on potentially still keeping them, but it still might be tempting to potentially shop around, but then you have to try to make a good trade on it. But, uh, you know, this is all the things that can shoehorn what this Calgary Flames view, starting with Jeff Ford. So I guess what I'll ask you out there is, what do you, what would you do if you made the decision on Jeff Ford? Is he going to be technically the official head coach? Would you still keep him on as a, as an associate coach on the staff if you decide to, let's say, bring in uh, Peter Lavely Yolette or Gerard Glant? And uh, what do you think of those injuries that uh, you heard about uh, Calgary Flames? I mean, I'm going to say the least shocking was the Matthew Chuck one, but uh, Rasmus Anderson and Sam Bennett, and I would say he definitely. Those players definitely stepped up. And also, you can say, getting back to Matthew Chuck, despite the fact he was out in cushion, he definitely is uh, kind of barking back at the media about, you know, failures, you know, piling, you know, piling on Sean Monaghan and Johnny Goudreau. And he even said that, well, they produced more than I did. I mean, I know the injury didn't help, but uh, definitely shows you the heart and soul that Matthew Chuck has that. Could this be another time for changing of the guard? That uh, could could it be time to uh, for Mark Giordano, knowing that he's getting towards the end of his career? And you definitely got to say he's slowly declining now. After he won the Norris Trophy for the eighteen nineteen season, that is it time to maybe Mark Giordano to uh, decide to give the captaincy to Mark Matthew Kachuk? Because I definitely could see Matthew Kachuk being the uh, future captain of the Calgary Flames right now. And then, of course, uh, what do you think of all the potential uh, moves that could still happen in the off season? But, uh, of course, what I plan to do in the off season, if there's anything significant that comes up, I would say whatever the Flames decide to do with Jeff Ward, which it sounds like in the next week or two, I'll be making a video either way. And, of course, any, you know, free agent signings, drafts, of course, that's still to come. And any, you know, trades or... Whatever it happens to be, that uh, I'll make a video on. So, as I say, if you want to follow along with this Calgary Sports fan's journey, home of the Flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, and Stampeders, I mostly talk Calgary Sports on my YouTube channel. I also do have personal vlogs, attempt to comedy, and I also do have my experience at Sam on the road at a sport event. So, if it all sounds like it'd be interesting to watch, do follow along with this Calgary Sports fan's journey. You know what you do? Just make sure you hit like, subscribe, and according to my demographics, 85% of people that watch my content aren't subscribed, so hopefully if this all sounds interesting, you can join the subscribed train, and I want to continue growing on this platform and keep doing what I do. And I also have my other social media links down in the description below, and if you're watching this video right when it's live, I would say most of the time, expect most of my content to come in bunches on the weekend, because that's when I have time to... Uh, make my videos I might have some time but it hasn't seemed like be as much the last few months where I have time to maybe sneak in a video during the week it has to be a big enough uh, story for me to want to make a video on but uh, of course a uh, long week coming up I plan to make a few more videos including one of the things I've been doing on my channel is my remember the Calgary series where I'll talk about Calgary sports teams from the past so I definitely still have plenty of content that I still like to make on my channel it's just a matter of having time to do it. Mostly it's all the way on the weekends when you have time to actually record and edit render. If you're a content creator yourself, you definitely know what I mean. So, as I'll say, close out here and say Go Flames Go! And I'll see you in the next video and I guess uh, it sounds like there'll be some more off-season news coming in the next uh, couple months while with the draft and phrase of frenzy and decisions to make on some players. And, of course, the head coach with Jeff Ward. So, I'll see you then.